The first thing I wanted to show you is when I dress the piriformis, I like to put the patient's arms up on the chair. So you can see her here that her arms are on the chair. And what that does is it creates more of a flexion through her spine, which changes the position of her pelvis. So creating a flexion of the trunk at the spinal joints allows for a posterior tilt of the pelvis. So if you don't, if just to put that into perspective, if she's lying prone, her pelvis is anteriorly tilted because her lumbar spine is in extension. And so then you'd also factor in like the amount of breast tissue, the size of the rib cage, all those things would be a factor. But by having the arms up on the chair like this, I can drive the trunk into flexion at the spinal joints, which then drives the pelvis into a posterior tilt. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that PSIS. And once I've done that, I'm going to work my way onto the anterior surface of that sacrum. So I'm going to compress that tissue, the piriformis, into the sacrum. And once I've done that, I'm going to apply a friction massage stroke to address that piriformis as it comes off the sacrum. So I compress that tissue into the anterior sacrum. And then once I've done that, I'm going to apply a friction massage stroke where I am going up and down and side to side. Now it might be hard for you to see my finger here, but I'm compressing and then I'm applying that friction where I'm going side to side and up and down. So while maintaining the compression of that tissue, I'm moving my finger up and down and side to side. And it's very, very fine, so it's really hard to see. I find that the finer movement I, of my finger allows for more precision. So once I've addressed that area or the area of the sacrum that's closest to the PSIS, I'm going to move down. And once I move down, I'm going to feel for that lateral border of the sacrum. Once I feel that lateral border, I'm going to slide onto the anterior surface of the sacrum. And then once again, I'm going to compress that tissue of the piriformis into the anterior surface of the sacrum and apply that friction massage stroke where my finger is moving up and down and side to side. So while maintaining that compression of that tissue, my finger is moving up and down and side to side. And I will continue to work along the lateral sacrum, but from here, I go down to where the sacrotuberous ligament comes off the sacrum, and then I work my way back to where you see my finger here. Now it's also important to consider that the sacrotuberous ligament comes off of that PSIS and runs all along the sacrum until it gets to where my right finger is and then from there, it goes over to the ischial tuberosity. Now, I recognize that some books have that ligament. Um, they call There's two different names for that ligament, but there's also books that refer to the entire ligament, even though there's different directions to its fibers. They refer to that entire ligament as the sacrotuberous ligament, whereas some books refer to the sacrotuberous ligament as just the fibers that go from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity. No matter what the case is, as far as the, the book and what they call the ligament, the fact is the ligament runs from the PSIS to the ischial tuberosity. But if you can imagine from where my right finger is to where my left finger is, that's all ligament and that piriformis attaches to that ligament 
So when I'm addressing the piriformis and trying to gain as much access as I can to that anterior surface of the sacrum, it's important to recognize that I'm also addressing the piriformis as it attaches to that sacrotuberous ligament. So I want to address as much of that anterior surface as I can, and I will work my way along the sacrum multiple times until I access as much of that anterior surface of the sacrum as I can to address the attachments of the piriformis as it comes off the sacrum. So once I've found that sacrotuberous ligament as it comes off the sacrum and then goes over to the ischial tuberosity, I'm gonna then work from there along that lateral aspect of the sacrum as much as I can. I'm trying to get onto the anterior surface of that sacrum. And then I'm gonna work my way back up along that anterior surface until I reach here or in line with the PSIS. When I address the femoral attachment for the piriformis, I like to position the patient in side lying. And as you can see here in the frame, her thigh is at 80 degrees of flexion. There's a slight adduction that also allows for a slight medial rotation of her femur. So at 80 degrees of flexion with the slight adduction and the slight medial rotation or internal rotation, I can better access the femoral or distal attachment of the piriformis as it attaches to the greater trochanter. You can also see here that in order to get her thigh in this position, I use a relatively big bolster and I find that a flat bolster works really well because then her knee and lower leg are well supported and in this position her thigh is at 80 degrees approximately and her thigh is adducted which puts the piriformis on a slight stretch and then the femur because of the adduction is rotated medially so this will allow me to get onto the femoral attachment of the piriformis which is right where this blue mark is so you can see this blue mark right here. I want to try to access that area of the femur to address the piriformis on the greater trochanter of the femur. Once I've compressed that tissue into the greater trochanter, I'm going to maintain that compression. And again, I'm going to apply that friction massage stroke to the attachment of the piriformis as it comes on to the greater trochanter. So again, as much as I can, I'm going to try to stay perpendicular to the area that I'm trying to address. I'm also always visualizing where that tendon or how that tendon comes into or onto the bone. Here I'm accommodating a little bit for the camera, but it's not uncommon for me to change my angles for this as well. But again, for the most part, I will try to stay perpendicular to the bone. So compressing that tissue, maintaining that compression, and then applying that friction massage stroke toward the distal attachment or femoral attachment of the piriformis comes into or onto the greater trochanter. 